Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, Steak. Eater, original link. Top of the description, right below that, links to the Discord. Love to have you. How Chef Matt Bernero runs an iconic British steakhouse in New York City. Clocking in, preemptive like. My name's Connor, if you're new. I'm from Rhode Island. New England, USA, in that order. And I like to watch stuff. Yeah, let's go. Foxmore and its bones is a steakhouse. And the kind of culture that we've created here is we've merged the UK and the UK and the US seamlessly. The adrenaline of, of the excitement of the guests and the team kind of pushes me through every day. Morning, guys. Doing good. My day starts with people and product. So first is checking out on the team and then doing the same for, for all of our products and making sure that everything's to our standard. So this is uh, some meat that we've selected from the delivery that just came in. These are the cuts that we're going to fabricate today. It's a small percentage of the beef that we'll go through here in a day at Hawksmoor. First thing we're always thinking about here is beef. So our beef supply is usually the first to come through the door in the morning. Uh, we check it in, we inspect it. On a weekly basis, we go through a literal ton of beef where we try to utilize the whole carcass as much as possible. So we sell almost the whole cow. Incredible amount of beef comes through these doors every day. So See guys, amount of beef comes that through these looks nice. I watched the Wagyu beef, Kobe beef, and it seemed like one of those things that were just sort of expensive for the sake of 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 luxury you know and you sort of buy it because you can i don't want to speak for everyone maybe you like that intense marbling fattiness but i mean that's plenty of fat for me as it is i, I don't hate fat it gives some flavor but the the kobe wagyu beef wagyu wagyu it, it, it just seemed too like they even said if you ever see kobe beef like a kobe burger on a menu uh, it's, they're probably not telling the truth because real Kobe Wagyu beef is too tender to even make a patty out of. And at that point, it's almost like a like a pate tech. I don't know, but I, I would much prefer something like this than than a Kobe steak. Every day. So this is Chef Patty, sous chef here in charge of grill development, steak development, everything beef, and a master butcher. I have never tried it so though. This is... So. A whole rump off the bone, so fresh out of our dry aging facility. So the rump is uh, is the bum, basically. It's uh, it's a hard working muscle, and top sirloin is what it's known as. It's my personal favourite cut. The rump steak is really important to, to our mission as part of our sustainability mission, and also with our UK roots being such a popular cut there for the Sunday roast, it was really important to us to introduce the, the US to it and show them how delicious that cut can be is we'll actually use this cap for our tartar dish. Patty's here from the UK, a longtime member of the Hawksmoor team, and he's the driving force behind all things beef and grill at Hawksmoor. Having someone with, with Patty's skill, how to, to train uh, the staff, uh, both front and back of the house, was really a big integral part of, in opening the restaurant, and has really allowed us to be as successful as we've been uh, just being open for three months. <laughs> he's got his head around ounces now. Yeah, still, still getting to grips with Fahrenheit. We track the dry aging of it so that we know that it's at that perfect sweet spot of what we want in a Hawksmoor steak, between 28 and 35. I've just separated off what's known as the barrel, the barrel cut from the, the D-rump. So now we're just going to break down the D-rump into steaks. So this is our, our rump, or top sirloin as known in the US, on the menu, 12 ounces. It's a fantastic steak. This is kind of a cut that many cultures use, right? So Brazilians, picanha. In France, they call this the culotte, the rump cap in English. And here we just call it delicious. <laughs> so this uh, is the cut we primarily will use for tartare. A huge reason why we chose rump is that that chew to it. Th this sort of cut is interesting because it, it's, it looks very different texture-wise than a huge another reason cuts. why we chose rump is that that chew to it um, and that strong beefy flavor. The texture, the umami from the age, incredible. I don't know what I'm talking about, We're guys. Let me know if I'm steak wrong. Tartar, so we can make sure that the steak is uh, at the quality we need for service tonight. We basically tested every cut on the cow, uh, and the rump outperformed everything else. We hide the yolk, so it's like a little bit of a surprise to the guests when they cut it open. 
I've never Fantastic had fish. that before. So at Hawksmoor, we use a Turkish style grill, um, which is actually a replica of the grill in our very first restaurant uh, and every restaurant since uh, and is you know, part of the DNA of who we are. So this is a beautiful lump wood charcoal we get from uh, Ecuador. Huge chunks of wood, burns really, really hot, really long time, amazing flavor. You basically want to <coughs> create some air pockets so there's enough oxygen to circulate to help start the fire. The quality of the, the charcoal, this, this good, I mean, it literally takes 30 seconds to light. So there's no need for any chemicals or anything like that. It's just pure, like, fire and oxygen, just playing with the elements. But you really want a nice, dry charcoal, and that's why it creates that crack. Just the layers of wood where it's been carbonized, there's, like, air trapped in them. Uh, it's a sign of good charcoal when it starts to spit like that. Working with charcoal in New York is unique, mostly due to the cost of, of building out uh, a charcoal kitchen. What you do is you get the grill lit so that it is super hot, and then you create your hot spots to what your personal cooking style is. So we'll always have one side that's ready to cook and one side that's burning. And then it's like a game of Tetris. You're always moving from side to side to, to play with what's best Tetris. for the steaks at the time. Here in America, you know, we're, we're a newer country and we're starting to realize and care a bit more about like what our animals eat. In the UK, they have a bit of a head start on that. They have a ton of old world farming. Grass-fed is like kind of almost seen as a, a bit of a nouveau thing. Whereas in the UK, it's, you know, it's what the majority of our cows are, are fed and raised on, on grass. Rather than just taking exclusively porterhouses out of the short loin, we take the whole thing. Porterhouse will have the largest amount of filet, probably our most popular uh, sharing steak. As you start to go a little bit further down the short loin, you get to the T-bone, and then as you get even further down, you lose the filet totally, and kind of get our bone-in strip out of this, which uh, I would say is, is my favorite steak on the menu. It's beautiful bone on the side, excellent flavor, nice and thick. What's your favorite, Patty? Of the three? Yeah. Strip on the bone. Yeah, we agree on that one. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, my least favorite is Porterhouse. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if you want to use that or not. But <laughs> <laughs> Your bloody sound is really nice. Oh, people. Good. This is the whole tenderloin, or uh, fillet as we'll, we'll know it in the UK. Very lean piece of meat. What we do with the tenderloin here at Hawksmoor is, is quite unique. Places will take just the center cut barrel, get fillets, everything else goes. It almost looks like a, like a heart type meat. You know, the heart's very lean. It's almost completely muscle, right? And so it, it has a similar look to it. Places will take just the center cut barrel, get fillets, everything else goes. Uh, for us, we do full tenderloin utilization. So we're gonna break down the tenderloin into our, our three parts. So we'll have the, the head, which will be our Chateau Briand, and then of course the tail will butterfly and use as our, uh, our scurly. And that's where you can see a bit of our, our British culture coming in. The scurly is a Scottish dish, traditionally, and the, the name comes from the sound of the oats and the fat hitting the pan. It makes that sk -sk kind of sound. And that's what will get seared off for the cast iron. We'll make a call on how many fillets we can get out of that before it starts to cut into the chateau. In this case, it's two. And then what you're left with is a nice, even chateau that's got three pieces to it. That's what makes a chateau a chateau, where you have the end of the center barrel and then the two side muscles. And that'll go on our blackboard later. Our pastry program, I look at it as our secret weapon. Carl is a pro, an amazing team, uh, an amazing More variety of, a savory of desserts. Than a People sweet. coming just for dessert. It's really becoming a, a huge part of our identity here. This is my, by far my favorite morning snack. Maybe the maple tart, neck and neck, but maple tart, I, yeah, I this is you. my favorite thing to quality control in the mornings. Normally I'll be over here and she just kind of leaves it on the corner, gives me the look. That's when I know I can have it. So we're making the chocolate shells for the Grand Rocher, 70% chocolate. Carla is gonna be making the Grand Rocher, which is one of our signature desserts. Uh, it's inspired by her childhood favorite holiday dessert, the Ferrero Rocher candy. Uh, and this is her play on it uh, that we do in the restaurant. 
very important that we try to do as, as thin as possible. It's going to be pretty hard to uh, cut into them if they're not thin. This okay, is definitely for awesome. me one of the perfect chocolates to have in this time of the year, for sure. It's always in my house, always. She has a very it's interesting my accent. Pleasure. So it's 12 p.m., uh, we just finished butchery, the grills are lit, and now we're gonna start to get ready for our daily steak test. So Patty will take one piece from every cut that comes in. We taste it, we talk about it, we make notes, and if anything doesn't make the cut, it doesn't make the menu. Quite a generous seasoning of, of mild and sea salt. A, because we lose a little bit on the bars as they fall through, but also the big, heavy flakes make for a great crust and enable us to get that Maillard reaction going, caramelization flavor, its texture, and its appearance as well. well. We don't want bar marks. We want a nice, even, golden brown crust throughout our steaks. Obviously, different steaks have different fat levels, which will make for where and how long you need to cook them. So the heavier the fat, the quicker the, uh, the char, because there's a bigger conductor of heat running through the meat. Whereas something like a fillet, which has like much, much less fat, will take longer. You can see how good our extraction system is by how quickly it's going up. So although it looks like a lot of smoke, it helps create my, my natural charcoal cologne. The main difference between cooking with gas or cooking with charcoal is as the juices of the meat, the fat is dripping onto the coal, it's creating that bit of smoke which is kind of coming up and almost like glazing Gaving the meat it. with a whole other layer of flavor and I almost call it our secret sauce here. You have to pay attention the whole time, otherwise something can overchar or or burn, and then it's just no good. We won't, we won't send it. How many steaks have you cooked, you reckon? Since oh. ever, <laughs> millions, millions. I wouldn't be able to count as many. The importance of taste testing each and every steak is every cow is different, and especially once we put something at the 35 days of age. A lot of things. There is nothing more soothing to me than watching someone just perform their everyday task that they've been mastering forever. It just, it's, I, I love it. And man, I'm hungry right now. Things can I wasn't hungry before. Variables, um, so we take one piece off of every uh, subprimal that comes in and test it. Uh, and it's a real indicator of what the rest of the beef is gonna taste like and we can flag any issues. So let's start with this. This is our, it's not on the menu yet. It's the grass fed, grass finished. Bone and rib chop. Crack on and try a bit. This is the rib that we brought in this morning. So this is a new cut from a new supplier. First time we've actually tasted it. 35 days in the box. Really good. And I think uh, as more gets ready, we'll start to see it uh, on the menu. This is the boneless strip. Great texture. Amazing flavor from the age. Yep, that's a winner. Yep. It's absolutely essential that we have the whole senior team in the kitchen during the beef tasting, so it's not just my opinion, but it's the house opinion, and also to help develop their palates as chefs. Well, now he needs to cut uh, 10 times more meat than we did on camera. So if we do 250 cover service in the restaurant, 220 covers come off of that grill. It's a two-person job. Yeah. So now the meat's been uh, prepped, we're gonna send it back down into the fridge, mm -hmm. get everything weighed up, and get ready for service. So now we're in our prep kitchen. And this is kind of the heartbeat of the restaurant, uh, where everything that happens behind the scenes before it gets sent upstairs for service. This is Nick, one of the sous chefs on the grill. So Chef Nick here is weighing out all the steaks for the service. So these are all the large cuts that we sell by the ounce. So they all get individually weighed, packed up in peach paper, and labeled with the ounces. Uh, as customers order them, we know which one to identify from the drawer and uh, make sure that everyone gets the steak that, that, they've, that they've picked. So we're just gonna weigh out the chateaus for tonight's service. Six will probably take us into the first two hours. We'll most likely sell around 16 or 20 in the evening. A chateau like this coming in at 31 ounces because of no bone. Uh, it's about 10 ounces of meat per person. Plenty for three. And then we have something here closer to 22 ounces. This is a great steak for two or one very hungry person. Two reasons we weigh the steaks. One, for kind of our experience for the guests uh, with the marking off of the chalkboard and giving them that control of how much beef they want to consume. Uh, and for us, we can, you know, manage our costs down to the ounce. Uh, this is a count of all of the large format steaks that we're going to sell by the ounce that'll go on the blackboards. Uh, we have the different ounces that are available and then how many in each category we have available for each service. 
the sides that we do at Hawksmoor are Popovers. as important as the beef. We want to have kind of a rounded dining experience here where you don't just come in, eat steak and leave. So here we have the, the York, Yorkshire pudding batter. This is another kind of ceremonial act we do every night. Uh, the batter needs to be prepared 24 hours in advance. Is it Yorkshire right, look, pudding a pop okay, over? Actually, yeah. So you can see that beautiful rise, that nice indent, and then you have that nice, beautiful koei inside. Yeah, so we bake roughly 300 Yorkies before the service every day. Um, they go with the potted beef. So That's what Yorkshire pudding is? So I know these as popovers. We have them at Thanksgiving and dinner every year. And they're amazing. And if he shows mashed potatoes, then I'm going to lose my mind. Some asparagus, mashed potatoes, or baked potato, I don't care. Or baked potatoes. Or with a steak. So this is our like if I was about to die and they offered me a meal, I'm like the, the, that potted beef. What we do with all of our trim, we confit them in beef fat, and then that gets kind of whipped together in almost like a rillette, served in a little jar with Yorkies, bone marrow onion gravy on the side, and just like another way that we try to be really sustainable and and using everything that we have in the restaurant. So this is a half an evenings of bone marrow. We go through about uh, 1,500 pounds of bone marrow a week. Bone marrow is in everything. It's in our burger, it's in our oysters, it's in our sauces. Uh, it's one of our favorite ingredients. The goal of that center cut is just really is optimizing it, how much marrow meat is inside each bone. Egg. I'm wondering what the texture of, of marrow meat is. I think I'm about to find out. You can just see in there, by taking the center cut of the bone, you get that beautiful wow. deep cup of bone marrow. You could just slide it out like wow. that. Wow. So this is uh, day two of the triple cooked chips. Uh, last night, the prep team steamed and shuffed these. From the shuffing, you get all these beautiful imperfections in the potato. And that's what's going to get very, very crispy and create the signature triple cooked chip. You mean fries. So this is Mohamedou. Mo has been with us since day one when we opened Hawksmoor, and his primary mission every day is triple cooked chips. I gotta say, I love how many people in the kitchen have shaved heads. Um, it, it just makes me... Okay, like, whenever I walk into a place, I know, like, the chef is, like, a beard, and it could be in a... It could be in a... Um, you know, a beard net, and have long hair, and have a hair net. It's just... When someone's just like bald and little facial hair, it just makes me feel more comfortable when they're when they're behind the kitchen. Or so many different variables of how it can go sideways, but a real master uh, of what he does. Are you tired of chips? No. No, never tired of chips, right? Our triple cooked chips take three days from start to finish. Uh, it's a labor of love, but when you see the guest enjoying it, it all is worth it. And we do the triple cooked chip, and we also do a beef dripping fry. And we have uh, a clientele that remembers that flavor uh, and is like, I just can't put my finger on it. And that's exactly what it is. It's the, it's the original flavor of a McDonald's fry. All right, guys, three o'clock, staff time. Yeah. Afternoon, guys. Hey. Hey. All right, Mikey, let's hear it. Hell yeah. We have 200 reservations for this evening. When the line staff arrives, we have a briefing, talk about last night, what went well, what didn't, menu changes, anything like that, and just kind of bring everyone together uh, before we start the day. Yeah, All right, so great service, guys. What a great cooking yeah. staff. So everyone's outside uh, eating their family meal. I'm just boxing off what I'm working on. We cut all of the raw meat and fish as close to the surface as possible. Starting to get uh, to that intense part of the day, race to the finish line. This production is beginning. We have a little over 70 employees at Hawksmoor. Uh, this is the largest team I've managed as a chef. Uh, we have a lot of uh, legends in each department, and we're just really trying to build something special here. It's 4.45 on the dot. Uh, we're doing our sauce check every day. This is the, the last test. Uh, is that brisket or service. bacon? One, two, three, four, five. Just shy of 20 here. Cream spinach is a big one. It's, it's a yeah. staple here. Uh, tasting the two meat sauces, the veal and the chicken, both really good. That one, my favorite. Guys, what is cream spinach? And don't just tell, don't be a smart arse. I feel like if I say arse, it's less than, uh, 
and say it's spinach and it's cream. I maybe that is just what it is. I don't know. Sauce. Uh, if you don't feel the anchovy, then you don't know you're eating it. Too much anchovy and it overpowers what you're eating with. Small window of perfection. I love this chips. guy. Seems like such a great boss. Crunchy, nice acid from the malt vinegar. Great batch of chips. And he has vinegar on the fries. A little bit more salt on the tartar. But everything else great. Has anyone had a tartar, a beef par beef tartar, or I guess any? Um, I've never even had a um, what are they called? The uh, the the raw fish. Is it fish tartar? No, you know what comes like it's like a tropical kind of thing you might get at a resort. Ah. So here you can see all our Ceviche. single cuts for the service. Right. And then in the bottom is everything sold by the ounce. Doors are open and the guests are gonna start to come in. Game time. At 5.30, the curtain goes up, uh, lights go down in the dining room, and then it becomes all about the guest. As the day transitions into service, it becomes more of a conductor role. So we have a, a bar, we have private dining, which is huge and taking off, and then we have the restaurant. You know, we're kind of air traffic control on the pass, making sure that we are able to serve all three at the same time. Beautiful porterhouse. Service, please. Something about a cone paper cup. So this is our uh, cast iron steak, taken fries. from the tail end of the filet. Bone marrow scurly on top. Our uh, cast iron steak, taken from the tail end of the filet. Bone marrow scurly on top. Beautiful chiffonade of parsley, pinhead oats, a little bit of sea salt, ready for service. Tonight, we have around 220 on the books, plus two private dining events booked, uh, and then a full bar. It's one of the beauties of being in an open kitchen and standing in the dining room is you get to feel that energy uh, of the clientele, as well as the floor team. Uh, also, guys, anyone know what that gold is made out of? I'm assuming it's not actual gold. <laughs> the, 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 the edible gold strips. Incredible. Uh, so this is our bone and rib chop, nice T-bone, and a big boy, 40 ounce chateau. So the beautiful rib chop, Atlas carrots cooked with cider and mustard. This is two sides of bone marrow, smart table. Night's almost through, smart Order table. houses are gone, ribs are almost gone, couple big ones to sell. Mustard. This is two sides of bone marrow, smart table. Wow, they serve bone marrow as is. I very much want to try this. I might go here. Night's almost through, porterhouses are gone, ribs are almost gone, couple big ones to sell. By the end of the service, you know, it can be quite exhausting, but we're always quite enthusiastic and excited by the end because it's just a, a huge accomplishment what we do here every day. I finish once the last check leaves, uh, so around 10, 11 o'clock at night, uh, check out with the senior team, and then off to my next job with my son. And we're all in for the evening. All in, we boys, all in. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. He is respected and he is not feared. This this man is amazing. I'm blown away. Maybe I, I, and I'm and I'm positive it's not just the great editing by what is it Eater, Eater. Um, they have great editing, but man. When it comes, it's almost, it's over, right? Yeah, I'm subscribed, right? Bell icon for sure. Um, I am extremely hungry. Um, I'm blown away by the professionalism of that crew. And um, just when it comes to extremely expensive ingredients, uh, let me know anyone restaurant business or might know more about the... Uh, economic hurdles around starting a business like this a uh, food business restaurant that he he had a, someone like this come in to film what he does he down to the charcoal where he gets it they're knowing how to space the charcoal and uh, not allowing any kind of fumes or gases to to you know spray on the charcoal to have it started to have it it's just a pure charcoal smoke and heat and um, just getting the best meats, have bringing on a team from people seemingly from around the world, a lot from England, obviously. And um, how nice it, they, they seem, really do seem like a family. Either that or amazing at editing. I don't think there's editing great enough to just show how, how impressed I am with that. 
Delicious. I want to go there. So good. So, so good. All right, guys. Um, see you next time. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. If you are feeling down, my friend, do not worry. People have bad days. Everyone has tough times. You'll be good soon. Emotions are fickle. However you feel now, you could feel completely different in a month. Although, I, if you're feeling great, that means you might feel bad. Love you guys. Hope you're doing well. See you next time.